Hey guys, what's going on? Rob Johnson here. Let me adjust the camera just a little bit. Uh, this is going to be a real short, short video. Um, not going to be too much. I uh, just figured uh, to talk a little bit about uh, the You're No Good solo. Um, kind of a difficult one um, in some respects, but then again, not really too difficult. But putting all the parts together, are, are, you know, can be a little bit uh, can be a little bit interesting. So. We're just going to talk real quick. <clears throat> um, I got my Bumblebee guitar right here, um, relicked up a little bit, and uh, um, you know, kind of fun. Got the uh, old school Floyd on it without the fine tuners, so hopefully I don't go out of tune. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, you're no good. Um, I mean, the basic riff, and again, I'm I'm not necessarily playing it like everybody else would, but I just give you a little insight. And some of you guys may play this a lot differently than me, but this is just probably an easier way or an easy way to play it if you don't know how to play it. Um, <clears throat> I mean, the basic, uh, um, the basic riff, you know. So as far as the solo is concerned, by the way, this red stuff is supposed to signify blood, like Eddie's on the 10th fret. So basically on the solo, um, this, again, there's a few different ways to do it, a lot of different ways to do it probably, and this is only just one. <laughs> a little bit more so you guys can see it okay so what I'm doing on this again you're no good Van Halen 2 first track off the album is I'm, I'm actually on the um, I'm on the seventh fret on the G string and the eighth fret on the B string okay and you can either bend them up or bend them down now in this solo there's a lot of bends there's a lot of bends and if you don't get these bends right um, the solo just sounds like you know it sounds like crap so you really have to get the bends right. Now, I like to bend this first one up. And again, I'm sorry for the, the way that everything sounds. I like to bend them up. So I'm on the 7th fret of the G string and the 8th fret of the B string. And you can bend it up or down. I like to bend it, uh, like I said, this way. Okay? Yeah, you're right, Clayton James Hicks. What's going on, buddy? That is. It's Linda Ronstadt song. So, first chord... Okay, then, okay, so you're coming down to the 7th fret on the D string, the 5th fret of the G string, two hits, picking it twice, and then back to the 7th fret of the uh, D string. So here's what you got so far. Okay. Now, Eddie does this a lot. Um, it's basically just this harmonics. You can do it all over the place. It doesn't really matter. Um, I'm doing it on the uh, A string, and I'm, I'm kind of around the either second and the third fret, or the third and the fifth. And basically, you're just using your palm or the inside of your hand like this. It really doesn't matter. Um, basically, uh, just kind of coming down. Okay, so, so far this is what we got. We got this. Okay, now the next one you can do the same thing, because he does the same thing basically. But I like to do it with one string and use the bar. So I like to do it on the G string, like that. Just because it sounds a little bit different to me, now that might not be the case, but to me it just sounds like the first one is a bend, and the second one sounds like it's just one string. Okay, and then you got a mute, okay? And I'm probably not playing it great, so a lot of you guys can play it ten times better than me. I'm just giving you a little insight on how I play it. So here's what we got so far. Now, there's, a, again, a few different ways to do it. I'm doing pull-off. Okay. So I'm on the D string, 7th to the 5th, to open. A string, 7th to 5th uh, to, to open. Uh, still on the A string, 5th to 3rd, open. Okay, so you got... And then fretting the third fret on the E. Yeah, and you're right. Uh, it, it simulated blood. I, I just I said that a few minutes ago, but I couldn't catch who uh, 
who was asking that video. This is simulated blood <laughs> from Eddie's guitar. So uh, basically this part, again, sorry if it sounds like crap, guys. This is Google, so I'm playing through my 5150 uh, uh, 50 watt uh, combo. So again, I really apologize if this sounds like crap. Um, but uh, like I said, I'm trying to do the best I can with the sound setup I got. So here we, here's what we got again, okay? I'm gonna make this quick because we're gonna get into the hammer on stuff and let you guys play with this if you guys wanna play. So we got this. Okay, okay. now. Um, you can either hold on to your pick and, and, and tap with your uh, third finger, or if you hold your pick in the middle, whatever you want to do, it doesn't really matter. You're not going to need the pick for this next part for a little while. So basically, what I'm doing again, this is not this is not the only way to play. This is just a way. Um, you're still on the fifth and the seventh fret. Now you come up to the twelfth, and you're going. Okay, so I'm coming up on the A string, the D string, and the G string. Okay, and the B string, and I'm just hammering up 5th, 7th, 12th, 5th, 7th, 12th, 5th, 7th, 12th. Now on the B string, 5th, 8th, 15th. Okay, so I'm coming. And yeah, you got to get these bends right, because if you don't get these bends right, they're not going to sound right. So again, we're... Okay, so we're coming down to the 12. Whoops, oh, I'm sorry. I did, I did that wrong. Sorry about that. So, 5th, 7th, 12th. Now you're on the uh, B string, 5th and the 8th. Okay, so the 15th. Now you come back to the G string. So it's basically... Again, that sounds like crap. I know. Sorry, guys. So. Now, again, I might be playing it a little bit differently. This is just how I play it, okay? Okay. Now, that last part. The blood spot. You're on the, uh, you're on the G string. Now, you come back to the B string. Okay, now you're on the 5th, the 8th, and you're hammering on the 13th. Double hammer. Okay, and you come up to the 15th, and back to the 13th and the 12th. Okay, so you're... Okay, you got to get these bends ready. So you're... Now you come back to the uh, G string, okay? Now here's where these last bends are really important. Okay, so you're on the G string, bend up at the seven, two bends, hammer on the 12. Now this is kind of a tricky part, you slide up and let off the 12, hammer on the 15. And then open E, low E. Okay. And that's basically it. So we'll go through the whole thing slow. Okay. Here we go. with it so just a little uh, just a little tutorial on uh, how you can play the you're no good solo um, again that's not a great rendition of it um, just kind of fun you know hey Johnny what's going on buddy good to see you yeah I can't wait to see you guys later 
Um, You're No Good is a fun song. It really is. Um, and again, guys, you know, I'm not playing it perfect, and I'm sorry because it's Google, so the sound is not going to sound that it's going to sound very garbled. But again, that's basically all you're doing. The whole, the whole solo is basically you're around the 5th, the 7th, and the 12th fret, and you kind of come up back up, but it's all hammer-ons and stuff, and you really got to kind of nail it. Otherwise, if you don't get those bends right, they're not going to sound good, you know? <laughs> It's a really simple solo, but you just got to kind of get the bends right. So play around with it, guys, and, um, you know, have some fun. Um, and uh, like I said, I can go for another few minutes if you guys want. Um, again, I'm just kind of messing around with my Bumblebee. And uh, um, if you guys want to, you know, if you got any questions or anybody has anything, just let me know. We'll just chat for a couple of minutes. And if there's not much uh, um, conversation, no problem. We're going to go live, probably Johnny and I, a little bit later. Um, I'm not sure if Dave's going to be available. I think he's tied up, but uh, we might go live a little bit later. But uh, uh, what's going on? Anybody? Uh, how's everybody doing on this Sunday afternoon? <clears throat> Are we doing well? <laughs> I did a couple Instagram videos today. I just did a little riff on 5150 and 7CO and, uh, you know, stuff like that. Um, actually, kind of funny... Uh, um, uh, thanks, Jimmy. Um, it's like I said, I'm sorry it sounds like crap, but, uh, you know, I, I got to get set up with a pretty good sound system here, but, um, thank you. Appreciate it. Like I said, if, uh, if, you know, a lot of you guys that are better players than me, you guys will just kind of pick out, you know, where, where I am on the fretboard. Okay, good. Glad. Thanks, man. So it's just my playing that sucks. No, <laughs> but no, that's cool. <laughs> Anyways, um, we're playing Seventh Seal, um, and I did a couple videos on that, and uh, I had my green Music Man guitar, and I was, you, you kind of, I mean, again, there's a lot of different ways to play it. I basically just kind of two-string it, and then kind of mute, uh, mute the, um, uh, let's see, the B string, and then kind of ring on the uh, low E, I was going to be the high E, so I'm on the D string on the ninth fret, the G string on the 11th fret, and then I'm kind of muting the B string. My, Barney's here, my dog. He wants me to throw his toy. I'm sorry about that, guys. So basically, the, the opening riff has to And all you're basically doing is you just, you know, you're just moving up. That's all it is. And you're just double strumming. And you can add, you know, different strings in there. I try to, you know, uh, two note it here, and then, like I said, mute the B, and then let the uh, a high E ring out. And you get that kind of heavy or sound or whatever. So I, I did that little video, and a couple of guys were like, "Hey, do a do a tutorial, do a tutorial." Well, I'm not going to do a whole thing on Seven Seal. Seven Seal is a very simple song to play. It's all basic chords, you know, because then he just comes up here higher. That's all it is. And then he just, he's just playing around. Oops. part about Seventh Seal is when you listen to the album, he plays it, it's almost like in its, how you doing? It's almost like Seventh Seal is in its like beginning stages, because when you listen to him play it live, not in 04, <laughs> when you listen to him play it live in uh, a 95, he does all these different things, like, you know, he, he does that riff, uh, let's see, uh, and then he's... He does that little trick where he slides up the high E, does a pull off. He does that, and it's the same idea as. 
You know, it's that same little Eddie stuff that he does. It's kind of interesting. Um, and one of the other things he does, if you listen to the old, um, let's see, Luxar Club, where they opened up with the song before they went on tour, he did this really kind of interesting harmonic run, kind of like Pound Cake, and it was, uh, and I really liked how he did that. He only did that in a couple of times, and then the rest of the time when he was, you know, looking for a fill, he would, he would do that. But when he was doing that one riff here, he would do that, and it was just perfect. Eddie's like perfect at knowing how to pull harmonics out and stuff like that, and I've always admired him for that. And he never does the same thing, well, sometimes he does, but he never does the same thing twice. And this other thing that he was doing live, which I thought was pretty cool, um, <laughs> thanks, Amanda. I'm just sitting here, you know, just like nothing going on on a Sunday, so I'm like, ah, what the heck, I'll do a, I'll do a little video. But the reason you can't see my face is because I'm trying to show my guitar. I'm going to do more of these because people keep asking me all the time, like, uh, hey, what's going on, Jeremy? People keep asking me, you know, to do some videos and stuff like that, and it's kind of fun. So Johnny and I will be going live in a little while. But uh, one of the other things he did in, in, that, in the breakdown of the song, again, I think it's... You know, then he goes... Uh, yeah, something like that. Well, one of the other things he did, he, he, he's always looking to fill holes. Filling, uh, folding laundry, yeah. <laughs> he did my laundry earlier. Well, on the album, he did it kind of like that. But live, he's always looking for like little harmonics and things to, to, you know, to throw in there and fill holes and do different things. So one of the things I noticed, he always, and he's always doing the... He's always doing those harmonics. So if you listen to some balance era stuff live, you'll notice another difference in the, um, uh, from the album. So he would do something like this. Or, yeah, we go. Then he comes. And he would do that. It was kind of interesting how he would always put those those fills in there and you know and then I always really love the part you know. so it's all you know just pretty basic simple stuff seven seal is a very very easy song to play However, you gotta, it, it's, it's, the timing on it is, is also, uh, imperative. Um, um, hey, Ken, what's going on? What are you doing here? You, good to see you, buddy. Good to see you. Yeah, well, there's gonna be all kinds of new stuff coming my way, so, um, but, uh, <laughs> we gotta get together, man. We definitely gotta get together. It's been a long time, so, uh, new career changes for me, and, Whatever, but uh, yeah, give me a call, bud. I'm glad you reached out the other day, so um, we'll get into some 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 different stuff. But um, one of the other things that I really like is uh, 5150. Thank you, 5150. The song that's one of my favorite ones. It's there's a lot of double stops in that song, but the main riff. A lot of you guys. It took me a long time to to learn this um, this riff. I mean, I've been playing guitar for over 20 years, but. Um, matter of fact, the guy, my friend Ken, that's just responding right there, um, he was, uh, we've been friends for 25, 30 years, and um, him and I were together when I first started learning guitar, because um, martial arts was always my big thing, it still is, but I didn't get a, I got kind of a late start on learning guitar, um, I didn't start till I was like 20, like 23, so I was kind of a late, late bloomer on guitar, but at the same time, it's, uh, um, um, you know, it's, it's fun and I and I enjoy playing, but 5150 is an interesting song, just the main riff, you know. And, and again, it's all, 
it's just timing. It's it, you know. It, so you, again, you're, Eddie likes to play around a lot on the fifth and the seventh fret. He really likes that. I mean, that's that basic A chord. You know? He always likes to play around that. So basically, 5150 is um, you're fretting the fifth fret on the B string and the seventh fret of the D string and the G string. All right. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. No, it's uh, the <laughs> you're fretting the fifth fret of the B string, the seventh fret of the G string, and the seventh fret of the B string again. And you're pulling off with your pinky. Okay. So you're getting. And that's what the main riff is. That's that's all it is. And then you're and then you're stumping on the low E. I'm mean, on the low D. Um, open D, I should say. So yeah. That's all 5150 is. That's the main riff. So that's kind of a fun song. So we're kind of playing around with that a little bit today. But um, any other uh, any other questions or anything while we're uh, kind of hanging out here? I don't know how many thumbs down we got. Probably a lot, but. <laughs> So, um, if anybody's got any questions or any uh, kind of like riffs they want to hear or learn how to play or whatever, um, let me know. This is uh, my Bumblebee. Um, <laughs> Jimmy, thank uh, This is my Bumblebee guitar. It's got a, a, a original Floyd Rose on it uh, with no fine tuners, kind of looking like the 79 era. I put some, uh, some nuts on the bottom of the uh, screws to kind of make it look more old school. It is an EVH guitar, um, but I've kind of relicked it up a little bit. I've fixed a couple things, like um, on Eddie's guitar, uh, where's that part? Uh, where's that one spot? Like right here um, on this, it, the stripe went all the way through on an Eddie's original. It was cut off here. So there's some little things that EVH didn't get right. Uh, this was the first guitar Eddie had that actually had black tape on it. Um, no, Johnny, there's uh, no tone pot in this one because it's an EVH guitar. On my old Bumblebee, the one that Jerry made me, uh, it did have one. Dave owns that guitar now. We did a trade. Um, um, uh, sometimes, Jeremy, sometimes I keep them with stock pups. Uh, other times I don't. This one is actually a DiMarzio Super Distortion I put in here. Or actually, Dave put it in here. I also relic the headstock to look like the 79 era. And this is a vintage, um, vintage prototype Floyd Rose nut. Um, they're hard to get. They're the, they're the whale tail nuts with the, with the um, humpback clamps on them. So, uh, um, courtesy of Michael James. <clears throat> so this is kind of a fun guitar. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, anything else? What's, uh, what's everybody up to tonight? Anybody got anything going on? Pretty quiet Sunday night. There's no football on anymore, so, because my favorite team won. Have you heard any of the, ever heard any of the main Hagar era songs on piano? Um, hey, what's up, Jason? Um, yeah, I mean, like, Right Now and Dreams and uh, Love, Wa Love Walks and yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, I love those songs. Um, when it's love, I mean, when it's love is actually. I actually have a keyboard. I can play it on uh, on keyboard, just the main riff and stuff, and jump and all that. But I think when it's love is when Eddie plays it on guitar. He's doing something. Quite a other thing. Something like that, and then he, and he kind of fades in.
Yeah, so that's basically when it's love. Um, it's a pretty simple song to play, and the solo is, you know, again, I mean, in the main riff, you know. Uh, <laughs> He's always around that fifth and seventh fret. Um, that seems to be his sweet spot. What seems to be one of his sweet spots. Um, nice, Jimmy. Yeah, I love playing synth. I wish I could play. I wish I knew more about piano. I mean, I can play some stuff, but I don't really. I know where the keys are and everything, but I'd love to take some keyboard lessons. I always thought that would kind of, uh, you know, enhance my guitar playing. But um, so yeah, but no, I love the Eddie uh, piano stuff. I remember when he first started coming out with piano stuff. Um, you know, even even uh, you know after the Roth era, you know, like Dreams and When It's Love and Love Comes Walking In and Why Can't This Be Love. It was just, it was really cool. I really enjoyed that. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's pretty cool. Um, I always wanted to get the uh, um, the exact. Um, when it's love sound on my little Casio keyboard there, but I can never quite get it just right. <laughs> you know, I mean, just that basic. You know, just that main main riff. It was always kind of fun, you know, to play. Um, but uh, Sonic Project's OPX plugin is killer. Nice. Yeah, that'd be cool. All right. Nice. Barney, what you doing? What are you doing? I got my little uh, little bat boy dog here. He's just chilling out, hanging around. He always he's always like annoyed when I'm playing guitar. It's almost like whenever I'm playing guitar, he's like bothers me. It's like, play with me, play with me. <laughs> uh, Jason, uh, would you say the neck profile on the EVH? Uh, uh, what would you say? Excuse me, the neck profile is on the EVH Stripe Series at two. Um, you know, I'm not, it's funny because I'm not 100% sure, uh, the, the neck profile on the EVH feels a lot different to me than the, um, than the PVs and the Music Mans. It, it almost feels, it, it, it doesn't feel quite as asymmetrical to me, it feels more flat, um, a little bit, uh, it, it's not really too wide, I mean I love these necks, I mean they're, you know, they're great necks. <laughs> They, they feel really good, um, but they're a little bit thinner. I, I would kind of say it's, it, it's a little bit more maybe uh, fenderish, I would say, probably. I'm not sure what the um, um, profile is exactly. Yeah, Johnny, it's kind of close to a Charvel. Yeah, that, that, that makes sense. That makes sense. Maybe like a Charvel or a Kramer. Whereas the PVs, the PV Wolfgangs, are very baseball battish. They're very thick. And I don't not... I don't dislike those, but it's just a little bit different, you know. Um, modern, uh, modern C shape, yeah. Modern C type, yeah. Yep. I do like them. I do like them. They're. It's funny because this guitar is an EVH and it's got Strat style neck, and my Circles guitar, my Unchained Circles guitar, is also an EVH. Although I've retrofitted it with original Floyd and changed the paint job a little more. Same kind of neck. But this neck feels fatter to me. It definitely feels uh, fatter. Okay, bud, talk to you soon, Ken. Keep in touch, man. Great to see you and uh, hear from you. Yeah, keep in touch. Let's go out. I want to get, I'll get together and have a couple brews. Yeah, um, and say hi to Shannon too. Um, but it's strange because this neck just feels a little bit different. So I'm almost kind of thinking maybe maybe they maybe they change things up. I don't know, Johnny. What do you think? Do you think they change things up a little bit? Not sure, um, but uh, what what other gu uh, guitars you guys want to see? Anything? I mean, I'm, I'm I was only going to do about a five uh, five minutes of presentation just to kind of get my feet wet here on doing some videos on my own. But uh, any other guitars you guys want to see? Sean, what's going on, buddy? How you doing, man? <clears throat> like I said, if there's any other guitars you guys want, <laughs> all of them. Yeah, well, I got pretty much most all of them, so. Uh, just throw one out and we'll, we'll go through it real quick if, uh, I can't guarantee it'll be in tune, but, <laughs> uh, the American Robber Ron, ah, whatever you want. Purple Pacer, 
All right, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's, uh, let's check that out. That guitar is absolutely not going to be in tune, but we will go over it for a second. Hold on, let me grab it. <clears throat> this is a really cool guitar. Johnny's looking at all the staple in the back of the chair. This is an actual, um, <laughs> yeah, this is, uh, this is the real deal. Um, this guitar is one that I <laughs> have been looking for for years. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, it's got a Rockinger on it. This is the only purple Pacer 82 era that I've ever seen um, with the purple. And it's got the original neck, obviously. It's got the Lawsuit Kramer headstock. Molly, what's going on, buddy? How you doing, my man? It's got the original gold Goto crown head chevrons. Um, you know, it, this, this, is just a, this is just a great, great, great collector's guitar. And, it, and, I, and I do love playing this guitar. Um, it's actually a B-series. The serial number is B0130. So it looks like, uh, you know, 130, depending on how that went. Hey, what's going on? Uh, how you doing, Sandra? Good to see you. Um, <clears throat> um, it's, forgive me, guys. I'm on my iPad, so I can't pull, have a chat up. So I'm just trying to catch the questions as they come in. That's kind of why I'm jumping all over the place. Sorry about that. Um, but, yeah, this is the original Rockinger. Um, and this is a 1982. Um, thank you very much. Yeah, I, I love this guitar. 1982 Kramer. This is actually one... Uh, one guitar that I'd love to show, uh, I think Eric has seen this guitar, uh, but this is one guitar that he might want to do on his Kramer Corner, uh, uh, Kramer Corner uh, show, because this is one of the only original Purple Pacers um, that uh, has the Lawsuit headstock and the, and, and the uh, Kramer um, um, uh, chevrons. Um, for those of you guys that don't know what I'm talking about, Kramer was uh, sued back in 81 uh, by Fender because they had a Fender Strat style headstock. And um, what came out of that after was basically this type of a headstock, which was the chicken hawk or the duck beak or whatever you want to call it, uh, um, chicken neck as Paul Unker calls it. So basically all they did was they, they, they just cut off the ball off the end. But uh, they couldn't use the Strat headstock because of the uh, um, because of the uh, ball on the end. It looked too much like the uh, the Strat. So this is kind of a rare guitar, and there's not a lot of them out there. And there's even fewer of them out there with the gold chevrons and the Rockinger bridge. Um, so Scott Smith, a good friend of mine, says, and he knows Eddie pretty well, and he's been to 5150. He said, as far as he knows. I am the only one that actually has a purple version of this guitar, just like Eddie's. And I have, I have a body up on the wall, which is the multicolored tape guitar, and that's what this became. This did become the multi-tape guitar. Eddie put electrical tape, different colors, um, blue, white, orange, yellow um, tape all over it, and that's what, that's what this guitar became. But again, it's not in tune, so I can't really play it. But I will tell you, it's a great guitar. The bar is actually pretty high. You'll see how high the bar is. It's like a mile high. And um, the Rockinger Bridge, I really like. Um, but it actually, and it does stay in tune pretty well. Um, it's not quite as consistent as a Floyd. Um, you can do bar dives on it and everything. You know, and it does, it, 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 you can bury the bar. But um, I would definitely prefer a Floyd. I can definitely see why Eddie went away from the, the Rockinger um, and ended up going with Floyd Rose. But yeah, this is a great guitar. 1981 Purple Pacer um, with Rockinger and uh, Lawsuit headstock and, and uh, gold crown heads. So, um, What else you guys want to see? Any other guitars you want to see? The bridge and the nut is only... Yeah, I agree with you, Sean. It's... It's... I don't dislike this bridge, but it's not as versatile um, as a Floyd, you know. Um, but uh, Jason, the, the relic behind you, which one are you talking about? You talking about the the uh, Circles guitar, the Unchained, or are you talking about the uh, oh the Wolfgang? Okay. <clears throat>
Yeah, this is the uh, Wolfgang uh, Relic guitar. Um, this is the uh, Tour Relic 2000. I'll back up just a little bit so you guys can see me too. Uh, this is the 2015 Tour Relic. Um, this is a real EVH USA guitar. However, um, it was relicked by Chris Hubbard um, uh, and, and myself. I did the headstock. So this was a pristine um, um, <laughs> white guitar, cream, whatever you want to call it. And uh, um, I sent it out to Chris Hubbard, and he put all the checking in. You can see and did all the relicking, put the black paint on. I mean, it's it's it's. It's basically exactly like what the real one is, and, I, and I've seen the real one. It's, it's identical. Um, everything's exact. Got the kill switch on. Um, and I relic the headstock basically with an X-Acto knife. And yeah, I'm a little bit crazy. <laughs> um, yeah, Jason, yeah, those ivory specials are great guitars too. Um, you can see the back, same thing. It's got the, the checking in it, and it's just like Eddie's. It's like the original. The only thing I did is I put a um, I put a, a brass block in it, a little bit different, but uh, and I relic the relic the back of the neck a little bit so it looks a little bit dirty. Um, but yeah, great guitar. This is this is a fun guitar too. It's a lot of fun to play. Yeah, great guitar. It's it's fun. It plays nice, low action. Um, yeah, really cool. Thanks, Fender Drew. Good to see you. Yeah, this is a great guitar, and and it's and its brother, I would say, or the sister, whatever you want to call it, um, the Stealth USA Stealth. It's pretty much the same exact thing. Um, this is again a USA guitar. Um, this is not a, a signature guitar. It was one of the first Stealths that came out, and uh, so it is the real deal. It's got a, it's got the matte finish on it, custom kill switch. Um, it's got all the uh, updates that Eddie's had, titanium blocks, stainless screws. Um, let's see, I put the, the black electrical tape here like Eddie had on his so you couldn't hit the string on the pickup when he's doing his cathedral thing. Um, yeah, this is the real deal. Titanium nut, just like Eddie's was. And uh, yeah, this is, this is a great guitar too. Really cool guitar. Um, I got this uh, guitar about a year and a half ago, and it's, yeah, also a great guitar. But uh, definitely not in tune. <laughs> but uh, Johnny, I'll see you later. Let me know what time you want to go live tonight, okay? I don't know what, uh... oh, are you leaving or is somebody else leaving? I might have missed it. Let me know what time you want to go live. But what else you guys want to see? Actually, well, since I'm right here. This is also a kind of a, a cool guitar, if you guys have... Um, this is the Two Burritos and a Root Beer Float guitar, since we're talking about Wolfgangs. Um, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, they, they, they're, Craig, is, Craig is a great friend, and uh, he, they, those guys can definitely do some, some good stuff. Adam's got great equipment, too. Uh, a lot of skill in, in tricking these things out. This is the uh, Two Burritos and a Root Beer Float guitar. This is um, a USA body and uh, painted by Chris Hubbard, just exactly like Eddie's uh, Burritos guitar. Um, it's a custom Music Craft neck um, with a custom logo on it, painted again. And it's, it's, it's shaped exactly like, a, like an EVH neck. Okay. Um, it's actually, I, I, it's actually a, a, not, a, not a run neck that they did. It's kind of a one-off thing. But this is all. This is a, a fake faux, I would call it, uh, drop the hell bridge. It's your basic bridge. Um, put screws here, and all this stuff is just extra hardware that we added. Here's the little lever, which is fake, um, and, and in different saddles and things like that that we added. These fine tuners were were uh, screwed in to each fine tuner. So, you know, it, it doesn't work um, as a, a drop the hell. This is fixed. Um, um, yeah, this is, yeah, Jason, yeah, this is the one that I showed a few months ago, yeah, great guitar, I love it, it's a lot of, it's, it's a lot of fun, and if you guys check out my YouTube, uh, or my uh, Instagram channel, I did, uh, I did an as is, I don't think this is, I don't think it's in tune, but I did an as is, um, I did an as is, um, 
uh, version on this guitar because I have it tuned exactly like Eddie did. Something like that. I haven't played that song in a while. Yeah, it's a great song, um, and, and it's a fun guitar to play. This was Chris Hubbard's, and uh, it became mine a while ago. I love it. It's, it's, it's a cool guitar. Yep, very cool. But, uh... <clears throat> so what else you guys up to tonight? Are we going back to work tomorrow? <laughs> yep, I got tomorrow off, so I'm going to be doing some different things. Any other guitars? Any other requests you guys want to see real quick? Before I uh, call it, oh, actually, there is one thing I'll show you guys. <clears throat> this is my Kramer Ad guitar, Kramer Ad Frankie. This is the uh, first guitar. Well, uh, hard to say. The yellow double neck, like I got right here, is probably the first guitar Kramer made for Eddie. But uh, I busted the high E string on this thing. <laughs> Oh, that sucks, Amanda. Yeah, horrible, horrible. Mondays are awful, aren't they? <laughs> um, uh, this guitar was basically, we talked about it on one of Johnny's shows the other day, so I'm not going to go through the whole thing again, but the Kramer Ad guitar was one of the, was basically the first rendition Frankenstrat style guitar that Kramer made for Eddie, and they were, Eddie wanted a guitar like his Frankie. So Kramer had, you know, made this, destroyer looking thing that Eddie hated but he loved the neck on he loved the headstock so he kept the neck and um, um, uh, they got this walker body for him um, upstairs a strap body and they just kind of just basically tricked it out and Eddie really liked it and then Paul Unker did the paint job on it um, the interesting thing about this guitar on the back it says number one Edward Van Halen model and that's what Eddie says, too. It took me a long time to find. It's got that old English style on it. Um, but just one real thing real quick. And no, it's not snowing yet here, Sean, um, or whoever. I saw somebody else asked me a question on it. It's not snowing here yet, although we are supposed to get, get a storm tonight. But I think we're going to get, um, or Jason, I think uh, we're going to get uh, bypassed a little bit on the storm. Um, they were calling for a lot, and I don't think we're going to get as much. Um, the Floyd on this guitar was an original whale tail. So we were, Dave and I were talking, uh, and Chris and a bunch of other guys were talking about how you can take a, a, a bridge and kind of whale tail it out. Not to get too geeky on this stuff, because, you know, a lot of people are like, come on, that's kind of way nerdy. But, you know, um, it's kind of fun, you know, to take, a, to take a Floyd and kind of make it look like a whale tail. Um, so what I did is I took the fine tuners and I sanded them down with sandpaper so they looked like they were brass. I took the blocks out, <clears throat> saddle blocks, grazed them on my bench grinder so it just took the black off so they looked silver like steel. And then basically took the, the uh, collar off and then just basically got these nuts at the hardware store with some uh, nylon washers and a lock nut on the back inside. And... Now it looks like a whale tail bar, and I actually took the bar out to my vise and bent it a little bit more straight so it's not so, so uh, curved. And last but not least, the big brass block, I painted it, spray painted it silver so it looks steel. And on the Kramer Ad guitar, there was no logo on the, on the um, base plate. It didn't have a logo at all. So what I did was to make it look a little more like Eddie's, again, I took my bench grinder and just kind of grilled it off. Um, and just ground it down to where, you know, it's still smooth, but you just can't see anything there. So it's pretty much, you know, it works great. Still, you know, sits flush on the body. And this this is a great guitar. Just needs a <laughs> high E string because uh, I don't have one, you know. But, uh, yeah, Kramer Ag guitar. Kind of a fun guitar. And I'm going to be getting my Neptune guitar back. Um, from Hubbard next uh, or next week should be coming in the mail, so I'm pretty excited about that. Um, <clears throat> and it's going to be definitely an upgrade, so I'm, you know, it should be pretty cool. So, anyways, um, thanks R2 R3. Uh, I didn't get a chance to say hi to you, but thank you very much. Appreciate it. Um, like I said, anytime you guys want to see any particular guitars, let me know. I mean, 
um, anything you want to see. I thought I couldn't read real Floyd Rose. Yeah, I know, Sean. It's funny. Normally, I wouldn't do that. You know, I wouldn't ground off the, the, the Floyd Rose, but just on that particular one, because Eddie's was one of those prototypes, you know, I was trying to tweak stuff just to make it a little bit more accurate, so to speak, but, um, you know. You guys, uh, <clears throat> you guys want to see this one? This is one you probably, oh gosh, pull my back out pulling this thing up. <laughs> oh gosh, yeah, this is, uh, th thanks, uh, thanks, Santa, Nocturnal Butterfly, thank you. Um, this is a fun one. This is uh, my double neck Kramer custom build lock body um, custom neck. It's not a real aluminum. It's just painted like that with a Kramer um, Kramer Pacer style uh, chicken hawk uh, uh, six string. Uh, uh, yeah, this is a fun guitar. I built this last year. Um, it's it's got a it's got a kind of a uh, a lot of people that do these models put Floyd's on them because getting Rockingers are just too difficult to get, and instead of putting a Rockinger on, I just got this Washburn gold kind of bridge which kind of looks like a Rockinger. I didn't want a Floyd on it because a Floyd would have kind of the screws would have stuck back and kind of covered up the deviation. Plus, there's no bar on it. anyways. Eddie never used a bar on this guitar because he did uh, Cathedral on. Um, on this guitar. He did Cathedral on, on, on the six string and then he did Secrets on this guitar. And I don't think it, oh, it was, this isn't even in tune. Uh, there's no way can I play, can play Secrets for you guys because this guitar is not in tune. But uh, <clears throat> this is a really cool guitar. Um, it's a fun build. This is a shallow badass bridge that I had custom made for, for two notches put in for a 12 string. And uh, it's exactly like Eddie's in every way, shape, or form, except for two things. The, this is not a Rockinger, and this is not a real um, aluminum neck. But other than that, the body shape is exact. And um, like I said, this is what the back looks like. And it's pretty much what, what Eddie's looks like on the back. I think Eddie's actually had a skunk stripe on the six-string uh, six neck. But I can probably just, I'll paint one on at some point and make it look the part. But. <clears throat> no problem, Fender Guru. No problem. But yeah, this is a fun guitar. I really like this one since we're doing show and tell. This this was a fun build. There's not a lot of these out there. I think Hubbard, I, and I, and a couple of other people, Scott Smith and um, a guy, uh, Mark Banta, I think, up in uh, New Hampshire. We're, we're the only ones that have this particular version. Uh, or that particular replica. That's kind of a fun build. It's one I've always wanted to do for a long time. But, uh, <clears throat> um, what else? Anything else you guys want to see? Still, still got yours on pause. Okay. And the guru. Yeah. What are you, anybody having for dinner tonight? Anything good? I'm going to just cook up some burgers and some salad. Uh, the EX Music Man, you talking about the green one, Fender, or the amber one? Yeah, they're both EXs. They're both made in Japan. Um, I sold my original Eddie. Um, the Amber? Yeah, that's the one uh, Nesdal had a little while ago. Hold on, Brian. Give me a sec. This is the Amber one. This is just, ugh, this is, I'll tell you, this guitar, man, this has, his, this has got to be probably, and I've owned five or six original Eddies, um, original EDHs. And they're great guitars, and I've owned probably two or three EXs in my life. And this guitar absolutely blows away the EVHs. And, 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 and the only reason I say that is because some guitars, you guys know, for those of you guys that... You ever pick up a guitar and it just feels magic to you? Like, you pick up a guitar sometimes and you strum a chord, you know, and you're like, you know... Yeah, that sounds good, you know, oh, that sounds cool. But then you pick up a guitar, you know, where, where you actually, you hit a chord. And it just, it might not be in tune, but, but it just, it just rings out. It just has that magic to it. The action is just how you want it. Well, that's this one right here, man. That's this guitar, man. I'm telling you, it, it's, it's the best sounding looking music man I've ever had. 
And again, these EXs are the real deal. They're not fake. They're not, they're not copies. They are real Music Man guitars. Um, the bodies are basswood. The top, they have maple caps on them, but they just have a veneer top on them uh, over the maple cap, which doesn't change the tone at all. That's why you get these killer uh, quilt tops on some of them. And the necks are exactly the same. I mean, this one, you know, it's got all the bird's eye and everything. It feels amazing. And you just don't have the Eddie signature. So as far as the amber one, this is perfect because Eddie's main one didn't have the signature. Neither did this purple one. So and that's what I got this time. I got number one, <laughs> like Eddie's had number one. But yeah, this is, this is probably the best music man I've ever had um, out of any of them, EVH or anything. Yeah, yeah, it is. Thanks, Sean. Is those necks were copied? Of, yeah, these were the. This was the guitar that um, that Eddie had uh, Music Man copy his fifty one fifty guitar, uh, the neck profile. It was uh, uh, it was computerized copy of that, and because uh, Eddie liked that worn in feel, so the Music Mans have that. Um, well, the Eddies do, anyways, and these EXs do as well. The Axis ones are a little bit different. They're still close, but. A little bit, a uh, little bit fatter, I, or I think the eighties were a little fatter, where the axis ones are a little thinner, the profiles are a little thinner, but they're still asymmetrical. They're still asymmetrical. And I'll just show you real quick, since we're talking about the EXs, and then I gotta run because I gotta let the dog out. <laughs> um, and we can, I'll do another video here whenever you guys want, and we'll go over some other guitars. This is my green one. This is also an EX, and um, Craig uh, Stofko, CHS Guitars, painted this. And he actually uh, did the uh, um, a logo, it's all glossed over, and did the same thing on the back, you know, because I wanted this one to look like um, one of Eddie's guitars. Yeah, so this, this is uh, an EX all, and it's got a killer top on it. Uh, yeah, this one again, doesn't have quite as much bird's eye on it, but you'll see it's still nice and smooth. Yeah, yeah, Sean, it is, it really is. Yeah, and the neck is, I mean, the neck is just like, oh, it's just like plush. I mean, it's just like, you know, they're, they're just butter. I have the, of course, I have the action on my guitars pretty low, you know, anyways. Yeah, but that's this one. This is my green one, yeah. This is my green. Favorite color, green. Go figure, huh? <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to run, guys. I want to uh, call it short. But if you guys want to watch Johnny and my show tonight, we will be on. I don't know exactly uh, what time. Probably within an hour or two. Probably between now and the next couple hours, we're going to go live. So, um, uh, yeah, you, you see Hubbard's. Hubbard's just got an EX in purple. Um, if you guys get on Facebook, you'll see that. But um, So, yeah, watch our show tonight. Thanks, guys. I hate to cut you short, but... Uh, uh, little guy here uh, needs to go out and otherwise I'm going to have a mess to clean up. Um, thanks guys. I really appreciate it. Fender, the American, Sandra, Jimmy, um, uh, who else? Fender Guru, R2, R3, everybody. Johnny, um, Amanda, thanks so much guys. Appreciate it. I'm going to do more of these hangouts, probably on my own. Um, you know me, I love to talk. So <laughs> um, uh, we can talk about anything. It doesn't have to just be guitars, but Time to sell everything. Yeah, I might need some money here pretty soon. So, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah. So, uh, like I said, we'll be live in a couple of hours. I'm just chilling out tonight. And um, um, thank you. L love your knowledge. Well, the only reason I have a lot of this knowledge is because of you guys. Um, because you guys are the ones that keep us on our toes and you know ask all the questions. It's just been kind of a fun thing. Last thing I'll just say is you know. For, for me, playing guitar is more of a, I'm more of a hobbyist, um, uh, you know, martial arts and police, L, law enforcement stuff, fitness, that's kind of my main passion in life, you know, that's what I really, that's, that's what I'm an expert at. The guitar stuff for me is more of a, uh, I'm a more of a hobbyist, I mean, yeah, I can play, but I mean, I'm, a, a lot of you guys out there, you guys are just, you know, professional players, I mean, I can play I'm a decent guitarist, but I'm not like a lot of you guys. But I do enjoy the Van Halen stuff, and I enjoy talking about it, and I enjoy building these guitars and playing them and, and learning. And, and, and that's like anything else. I mean, we're always learning, you know. But uh, anyway, see you guys live tonight for those of you that can uh, watch the show. And uh, catch you guys later.